Okay. So section 16.8 is all about, let's say we have an acid. It does not matter what acid. Let's write out the acid equation. That acid donates a proton to become A minus plus H3O plus. If you want to determine the strength of the acid, so this section is all about strength of this. The strength of that is fully dependent on this. The conjugate base controls the strength of the acid. Okay? That controls the strength. So, what you have to ask yourself, is this stable? If that is stable, yes. That's a Y for yes. If it's stable, the acid is strong. If it is not, that's an N for no. It's weak. That's it. Okay? So, uh, let me explain this. If this is a strong acid, it goes to the right very easily. Does that make sense? It goes to the right, it donates a lot. Making products stable. Whenever something goes to the right, the products are stable. If it goes to the left, the reactants are stable. Well, we want this to be strong, I mean, it donates a lot. So we don't want this. We want this to go to the right a lot, making this really stable as a product. If this is really stable, the str more stable this is, the stronger the acid. The weaker the conjugate base, the weaker the acid. Or the less stable the conjugate base, the weaker the acid. So all those strong acids on the tables that you've learned, they're strong because their conjugate base is really stable. Yeah? How do, you, how do you determine whether they're stable or not? Perfect question. That's the next part. There are four factors to determine if something's stable. Okay? So, uh, let me write down the four factors. Uh, I'll write it down here. Okay, four. factors uh, for the conjugate base, okay? You're going to do this in OCHEM again a lot. They're going to have much harder problems than what we're doing. So this is one thing, if you're taking OCHEM, you got to lock up in your brain. You're going to do it again in 118A or 8A whenever you, your first OCHEM comes around. So here's the four factors. Factor one, electronegativity, and I'll explain each one. Factor two, polarizability. Should have heard that word before. I used it earlier in the quarter. Uh, resonance. That you saw in 2A, resonance. And then uh, inductive. Okay. That, this factor you have not seen before. But it's related. Inductive is related to electronegative. Okay, so these are the four factors to tell you if something's stable or not. I'll basically say if it has any of these four, the more of it it has, the more stable it is. So uh, if there is resonance, it's going to be stable. If there is polarizability, it's going to be stable, etc. That's kind of how these four work. So then, let me give you, let's just do a basic example going case by case. Uh, I'm going to draw out part of the periodic table. Uh, if you have your periodic table, I'm going to start with carbon, go to the right, and down. So we have CH4. Has H's. It's an acid. Okay. Anything that has H's can be an acid. It doesn't have to be. Like ammonia normally acts as a base, but if it has an H, it has something to give away. So I'm just putting H's on all the molecules, all the atoms in the periodic table on this section. And I'll illustrate a couple of these points. So we can go down, SiH4, go down here, PH, you go down as far as you feel like. A, S, three. Go down from oxygen to sulfur if you want. You go down to selenium if you want. Uh, for F, you can go down to HCl, H, Br, however far you want to go, HI, etc. 
So those are all the atoms with the hydrogens on them. Okay? And if we want to determine which one of these is the strongest acid, uh, it nicely two of these factors follow the periodic table. So if I want to know if these are strong acid, I don't look at the acid, what do I look at? The conjugate base. So for all of these, I'm going to rewrite them, but I'm going to rewrite the conjugate bases. Okay? And you'll see where I'm going in a second. So uh, if this loses the hydrogen, it's CH3 minus. If this loses hydrogen, SiH3 minus. Same for the ammonia. If it loses hydrogen, NH2 minus, PH2 minus, ASH2 minus. Now we'll go to water. If water loses a hydrogen, OH minus. Uh, H2S loses an H, SH minus, SEH minus. So notice I'm just taking one H off. Once you take an H off, it's the conjugate base. So I'm drawing all the conjugate bases right now. Okay? So kind of, I'll circle them too. Everything circled here. The conjugate base. I'm kind of written in sort of orange. And then everything in white that's not circled is the acid. Now I want to figure out which one of these acids is the strongest. Okay, let's go look up and down first in columns. Okay, so we got one, two, three, four columns. Uh, what happens to size as we go down the periodic table? Size increases. Yeah, so it gets bigger as it goes down. The reason from chem 2A, every time you go down a row, you add a new orbit. N equals 1, N equals 2, N equals 3, etc. So the orbits get bigger, and once you put more orbits, just like our solar system, more planets around it, the solar system gets bigger. So these are getting fatter as they go down the table. So let's compare like fluorine and iodine, two opposite ones. Fluorine, I'll draw it here as fluorine. There's the fluorine minus atom. Let me draw the iodine. Okay? Iodine minus is just much, much bigger than fluorine minus. Okay. You know that atoms prefer to be neutral. That's their ideal. If they're neutral, they're happy. Once you put a charge on them, it, it's a little higher energy. Well, here, I'm putting electrons in here into a very tiny space. Here, I'm putting electrons in a very big space. It'd be kind of like I put you in a small tent with a mosquito versus I put one mosquito in Davis. Do you see how this one is more stable? You know, I put the annoying factor in a big area. Here I put the annoying factor in a very small area in your tent. You get to sleep all night with this fat mosquito. Okay? This one, the second one, because of its size, is more stable. The bigger one. Which one will be a stronger acid? HF or HI? HI, because if this is stable, it's stronger. So acid strength increases as we go down the table. Is that okay? It just gets higher and higher as you go down. That's why HI is a strong acid, stronger than HF. Now, the cutoff line, you know that HCl, HBr, and HI are strong acids, but the cutoff right here, it, HI is in fact a stronger acid than the strong acid HCl. There's a cutoff right here, this has a tipping point where these three are just really strong. But this one happens to be pretty weak. Okay? Same true here. H2SE is a stronger acid than H2O. And PH3 is a stronger acid than NH2. Does that make sense? So as you go down, it gets stronger, and this is because of size, which we call polarizability. Polarizability. Polarizability means how big it is. 